So that should have started. So um, the structure of tonight's session is going to be, Chris is going to give us kind of an introduction to the Young Leaders Scheme and um, share his advice from his experience working with all the explorers and Explorer Scout Young Leaders. Then we're going to hear from um, Matthew and James, and then we're going to have a bit of a breakout activity um, to kind of finish off, to have a bit of discussion and give you guys a chance to talk. Um, and hopefully we should be finished by about half past eight, so it's not going to be too long. Um, but now I'm going to pass on over to, Jay, uh, to Chris, who's going to talk to you all about the Young Leaders Scheme. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, so, yes, um, tonight uh, I'm going to be talking to you about the Young Leaders Scheme from uh, a leadership perspective. Uh, as has been mentioned, my name's Chris. I'm the District Explorer Scout Commissioner for South Leeds and Morley. And currently I am acting as Explorer Scout Young Leader leader. So working alongside Explorer Scouts um, and young leaders, it opens up a great opportunity for a section. Explorer Scout young leaders can bring a range of different skills and experience to the section that they support and can invaluably um, help invaluably with the planning and running of the section. And not only uh, benefits your section, but allows the young leaders themselves to develop skills for later life, equipping them for successful careers and to take on adult roles within scouting. Here we can see the scouts young leader tree. So this is where the young leaders sit normally within um, the scout association. Um, the young leader is usually linked to a young leader unit, but not always. Um, they are usually linked to an Explorer Scout unit, but not always. Um, young leaders are usually linked with the Scout group, Beavers, Cubs and Scouts. And then obviously the tree follows down from responsibilities and contacts all the way up to the District Commissioner and the Exec. Young leaders part of the Explorer Scout unit um, and it's automatically becomes a member of the young leader unit if that young leader unit exists. There are four types of young leader that you may be, need to be aware of. The first is an Explorer Scout who is partaking of young leaders as part of the volunteer section of their Duke of Edinburgh and or their scouting awards. They may be temporarily placed within your section for the amount of time required for them to fill the requirements of that particular award. Usually the minimum time is six months. Although many young leaders do remain working with that section for many years, they feel comfortable and they want to progress and give more back to the unit. The second option is an Explorer Scout young leader who is wanting to just be a young leader. They may not fit in with the Explorer Scout unit program activities they may have um, a preference for just helping out as an assistant but not wanting to do any of the activities so they may be permanently placed with a group or a section um, but they may not be regularly attending explorer scout meetings the third option um, is usually an explorer scout young leader who regularly attends an Explorer Scout unit who just wants to volunteer. Um, and, you know, it's, they want to volunteer and help out, but they're not bothered about the Young Leader Scheme, the, uh, the, the training through the awards, so they may not necessarily want to do DV. Um, they just want to help out where they can. Uh, and the fourth option is usually, um, a slight outlier out there, but as desk and young leader, leader, I've come to know this section. Um, and that's usually young leaders who come from external sources. For example, you have a local school which runs D of E. They may point their young people towards the local scout groups and ask them whether they would be able to take these young leaders on as part of their D of E. 
and we'll go we'll go into that a little bit further on so a young leader they have training requirements um, very similar to how adult leaders we have our training requirements the training scheme consists of 11 modules and four missions um, these modules cover a range of topics program planning inclusive scouting first aid um, as well as many other um, activities and skill sets that come on board um, the missions um, are there for explorer scout young leaders to show the learning in practice we will go a little bit into the missions on the next slide part of our training includes a very strong focus on safety and safeguarding module a is the first module that young leaders um, encounter and it is probably the only mandatory training module for young leaders um, so that will cover all aspects of safety and safeguarding and how young leaders uh, should interact with the adult leaders as well as the young people We also run first aid courses. It is an, one of the module one of the modules that is set out is module K, uh, and that is the equivalent of our adult six hour first aid training courses that we run. Um, and it's always great to have young leaders on board with a full first aid um, assistance. And we also have an orange card. The orange card is um, the young leader equivalent of the adult yellow card. And we'll go into that shortly. So Explorer Scout Young Leaders, they get quite a lot of benefit out of this scheme. And they are very similar to the benefits we get as adult leaders helping with the young, young people. They get to see beavers, cubs and scouts, you know, develop, let them have fun and also giving back to the groups that they have been in themselves um, and also giving back to the community and they also learn quite a lot of transferable skills so the missions that we have these are as i put before they are there to put the learning into practice game the first mission is to plan and run a minimum of three games for the section you're volunteering at least one game should take place indoors and one outdoors activity plan and run an activity but not a game with the section you're volunteering with program planning take the section's program ideas to a program planning meeting so beaver log choose things like that, you can bring in the young leaders to run that meeting with the young people. Moving forward with youth shape scouting is a big thing with the young leader program. Um, and delivery, taking responsibility for organizing running part of the program. Well, if you get a young leader that's on their way and has done all that training, you've got a very chilled out evening in store when they come and run that. You know, obviously, you still have all the, you know, all the safety and safeguarding aspects and making sure everything's safe. But if you get a young leader who's, who's sort of queued up and ready to go, they can run with it. So as a section leader, what are your obligations if you if you take on a young leader or if you're if you already have a young leader? Well, when a young leader is working within a section, you as section leader are responsible for their safety and welfare. Always remember an Explorer Scout young leader is still a young person, still a youth member within the Scout Association. And therefore, yellow card applies. 
So anything, any safety and safeguarding rules that you have in place for your section also need to come under sort of control with your young leaders. But not only the yellow card, green card options come into effect. If you normally like to do a program planning session down the pub and you've got a group of young leaders, is it ideal to bring them into that scenario or change the venue to the local Starbucks? Just things like that, how to change the way um, you, you think about interacting with these young leaders and bringing them into a safe environment, but also a supportive environment. Obviously, you should never spend one-to-one -one time. They're a young person after all. Camps and trips are um, sometimes can be a tricky thing with bringing on board young leaders. You may only have a finite amount of resources available to you. So sometimes some leaders may think, as these are young people, they can share with the cubs or the scouts. That's not the way. They are in a position of responsibility for these young people. So they cannot be with the young people. And likewise, some people might see them, oh, they're part of the leadership team. If we've got a big dorm and there's loads of adults around, they can share with us, it's not a problem. No, young leaders need to have their own sleeping accommodation. Now, if you're on a larger camp where there is an Explorer Scout unit that's camping, say you're at a, um, a county event and the Explorer Scout unit that these young leaders belong to are also there. There's nothing to stop those young leaders camping with the Explorer Scout unit. As long as they are camping with people of their own age, it is fine, but they can't camp with people of a um, younger section or with the adult leaders. So I mentioned the orange card and module A. These go hand in hand. When Explorer Scout young leaders start the scheme, they should get given a copy of the orange card. Now, personally, I have a stash of these in my uh, Explorer Leader bag. Um, and I do usually hand them out. A lot of the time, they may end up lying on the side somewhere because you know, the young person has forgotten them. Um, but what I do actually say is, these are PDFs. You can get these from the Scout Association headquarters website. Save it to your phone. Explorer Scouts will have their phone glued to them at all times. So it's always worth telling them just to download a copy, keep it on the phone with them at all times, and they can refer to it. And with the Module A training, I do spend a lot of time going through every part of the orange card so they understand the do's and don'ts. And it is integral to safeguarding and child protection. Um, Explorer Scout young leaders are in a unique opportunity, and this is something that headquarters has identified. A young person, uh, a beaver, a cub, or a scout, may find that actually they fit this um, shall we say, they find that the, the Explorer Scouts are a peer group to them. And they may actually be more comfortable to disclose anything. But obviously the golden rule that I have uh, with young leaders when I'm training them with Module A is you have to be, you know, this may be a horrific thing that gets disclosed, but be confident that this young person has actually gone through it. They're just disclosing it to you. Listen, 
tell them it's okay for the, for you, for them to tell you the information write it down tell them you have to pass this information on and pass it on i go through that same mantra several times through the training schemes it gets hammered in and uh, luckily um the instances of disclosures are low um but it has been known to occur and um the module a is the reason why we have that as our major requirement it has to be done and then we steer them into the let's get everything else done let's get the other training done so as a section leader you may end up having an explorer scout turn up one night hopefully with prior advance warning um saying i'd like to come and help so they're going to be nervous they've probably never done this before and they don't know what to expect they probably remember like eight years ago that they might have done you know cubs or beavers or something um but they don't know how it works so take time to introduce them to the other leaders and to the young people speak to the parents at the end of the meetings and say this is uh this is so and so he's our new young leader he's going to help us out get to know them a bit you know like adult leaders everyone has their own range of experiences you may find that this young leader is big into something like fencing and you've never thought but actually oh i could run fencing with the with the cubs and the beavers fantastic great you can get him on board just find out you know ask them some questions how long have you been in scouting not every scout not every explorer scout started in beavers i've had in the last year i've had two explorer scouts join one of our units who's never been in scouting before um ask them have you been through this section that we're working with yes or no you know what do you remember um what sort of has come through why did you want to do the scheme is it just because you want to get your award or is there something that you know has piqued your interest with young leader work have any other experience working with young people have they helped out with things at school have they ever led any activities you know are they at school or are they at college you know just getting all this basic information out there I also ask them, are you working towards any of these awards? You know, are you are you doing Chief Scout Platinum, Diamond, Queen Scout Award? Or are you doing your DV bronze, silver, or gold? And also encourage them, get stuck in there. You know, if they're stood to one side and you're running a section meeting, just bring them over. Oh, come over here. Let's, you know, this is what we're doing. We're making bird boxes. So do you want to help you know knock in the, these nails with the with the with the cubs fantastic yeah get stuck in you know one of the things um i've seen a lot of young leaders be utilized for in the past is oh you just can you just run a game or can you just make the juice or sort out the tuck shop yeah fine they're, they're there to help but you know they're also there to run parts of the program rather than just the games so you know get them on that planning it's so much easier to have them there and support them you support them as best you can um as if you're supporting any of the young people in your section the more you support a young leader the more the young leader will get well 
they will end up supporting you more. So things you can get an Explorer Scout Young Leaders to do, get them to help plan the programme. Run your beaver log choose for you. Then go to the planning session, sit with the adult leaders, figure out what you can do as a section. Get them to plan the youth forums. Planning and running games and activities. It could even open and close the meeting for you. You know, doesn't necessarily mean our Kayla has to run Grand Howl. You get them to use a bit more of their tech savvy. If you're a bit of a dinosaur, a bit like me, you know, when they start talking about Snapchat and stuff, I, I go into a cold sweat. Um, but actually, these media savvy young people might be able to get you a great Instagram for your group. Why not get them there as media manager? But obviously, support them. They're under 18. There are things that go on on the internet. We all know. So just get them to run it while you're looking over the shoulder and keeping an eye on things. They will inspire the section working as a role model. And as one of the things in module A, they are taught that, you know, taking on this role, you are a role model. So be weary that, you know, little Johnny from Beavers might see you out in the street. So they are trained and they are aware. So all these activities, they do need support. You may find that young leader will pick it up straight away. If you're struggling, contact your Explorer Scout young leader, leader or contact your desk. Just speak to them and just say, look, we're not gelling. There's things that might not be working right. And we'll come down and we'll, we'll assess, we'll help out where needed. It might be that the young leader might be suitable for a different section. And we may have space to move them across. They don't always fit in. Like with, with leaders, sometimes they don't fit. But we can move them around and find somewhere which is more comfortable for them. So that is me. Um, I'll stop rabbiting on now because I think I've taken more of your time. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Uh, and we will move on to the next. Hi, I'm Matthew. Um, I've been involved with scouting for like over yeah, 12 years now. I started as a beaver. Um, I was a young leader for four years, two years in Cubs, two years in Scouts. And I'm now part of, a leader and part of the county exec. I'm just going to be sharing some of my experience of uh, what young leading was like for me and to try and share some practical examples of how we can support and encourage our young leaders to make them better leaders in our sections. So um, as Chris was pointing out, um, I think from my experience, quite a lot of the young leaders are from DAV or, or there because a friend is doing DAV or some sort of uh, volunteering. And I think it's important that we manage to encourage these young leaders so that they want to stay engaged with their leading and not just do it just for the time that they are in their section because they have to be. Um, so I believe it's our responsibility as much as with looking after our scouts, cubs and beavers that we uh, manage to encourage these um, young leaders to join in and. Uh, step up to what they need uh, to be a good leader. So um, firstly, I'd say try and get them involved in planning. They're much more likely to enjoy and want to join in with the sections um, if they've got some sort of um, way of sharing their ideas. You've got to remember that they are, in some cases, much younger than you and also a lot closer in age to the um, people in your groups so they're going to have a slightly better idea of what uh, the kids are going to enjoy but also it's going to be your responsibility to help them carry out those ideas so if somebody comes to you wanting to do something and one of the best ways you can support them is help them make a risk assessment 
help them um, help them with some of the planning or the logistical details so that it can get this idea to the cubs or scouts or beavers so that um, the cubs, scouts and beavers can really enjoy it. Um, second of all, I'd try and grant them more responsibility over time. Um, first of all, it'll help them grow. Um, it'll help them get more involved. It'll also help them um, be able to, uh, to help them get more involved, help them be more thorough in what they do and help them have a better sense of appreciation for what they're doing, because the more responsibility they have, the more they'll see change in these cubs or scouts or beavers or whichever group they're helping with. And the more they help, the more they'll see how much benefit they have and the more they're likely to enjoy it. And another uh, key aspect, I think, comes with supporting them and encouraging them and coming alongside them. So I'd say it's a really big benefit. And I saw this. Um, to be invited on a camp as a young leader, yes, uh, it loses one of your spaces for your scouts because they don't count towards numbers. And it can be a bit of a hassle to try and find them an extra room or somewhere that they're separate from both groups. But they can be a really, a really valuable asset to your camp. And they're much more likely to feel valued and enjoy, uh, enjoy scouting if they're invited on those sorts of things. So um, not only is it... Um, our responsibility to make sure they're involved, not just when it's convenient. So not just running a game, not just running a tuck shop, like Chris said, but also um, make it enjoyable for them. So if they're on a camp, they're gonna be able to learn skills, help teach skills, but also there's gonna be time in an evening where uh, the scouts have gone to bed, for example, and you can um, have conversations with them, get to know them better, like Chris was saying, and be able to, and encourage them in what they're doing or uh, share why you enjoy scouting and hopefully that will spark something in them that will make them want to enjoy scouting too. Um, so yeah, that's probably one of the things that's had the most positive impact on why I stayed as a young leader and why I carried on into what I do now. Um, yeah, I think it's a really important thing to make sure we share those experiences with our young leaders and that we help them to carry on being a leader. So I think overall, the main attitude should be one of encouragement and support towards our young leaders, providing them with the responsibilities and opportunities to allow them to become the best leaders they can be and enjoy being part of scouting. So I'll hand on to James with some more experience. Thank you, Matthew. So hello, I'm James. So I have been a volunteer at Beavers in North Leeds for about the last four years. So I, I've obviously been a leader with beavers. I've got a bit of, of a different uh, outlook on what I've done. So some of the uh, advice I've got is much the same as everyone else. So obviously getting involved in planning meetings. So them being younger than everyone, than uh, well, maybe not, but them like being closer to the children in age, they might be able to have new ideas that they themselves might have enjoyed when they were younger, that they would think that children would also enjoy. So getting them to run a session, obviously. So I ran a session on animals and I, I did a bit about my dog. So I had to plan that myself, I had to run that. So that gave me a lot of experience for real life applications. So like if I was applying for a job or apprenticeship, I could say I had to plan and run this session about dogs. I had to I had to plan it in a way that the young the young beavers would understand things like that, and then obviously making them aware of the group rules, the do's and the don'ts, as uh, Chris has been saying, and then just a few other things like asking them how they're doing at the end of a session. So maybe it's the first session they're a bit worried at the start, and then you ask them how they were doing and say, oh yeah, this was actually quite good. I like this, and then also they might know some improvements to the session. So them being a bit younger, they might say, oh, well, this and that could be a bit different and this would make it better. So that's my advice. Thank you, James and Matthew. Thank you so much for sharing that. It's been really great to hear kind of your experiences as young leaders and kind of the things that you guys have got out of it and the advice you've got to pass on now. Um, hopefully everyone has found that kind of useful and helpful. 
we were going to go into I was going to was going to put you into breakout rooms at this point to have a bit of a group discussion but I think as there's not really that many of us we could probably just keep it all in one in the main room and then it saves us having to anyone missing out on any bits of um gems people have got um but because you've kind of sat and listened to us for a while um I thought it would just be great to get talking and what I wanted to discuss was just kind of hear your ideas and your experience the things you've done to kind of meaningfully involve young leaders in different areas um so either program planning which we talked a lot about tonight but also thinking more about like the growth of your group and thinking about ways you could involve them with either adult or youth recruitment um and then also ways to kind of get them to stay in scouting once they turn 18 like Matthew and James have done here um so yeah I'll just I'll put that in the chat now but I'll just open the floor has anybody got anything that they do in their group or their district that they think works particularly well or you think could work well if you haven't tried it like, it doesn't have to be something you've tried it's not like an idea you've got I think definitely the programme planning, uh, keeping them involved. We've seen some some really good ideas come out of the young leaders. Oh, lovely, Lisa. What kind of things have they um, they suggested for you? It's a mix of things. So sometimes, uh, like the guys said, it'll be things that they might have really enjoyed at Scouts. You know, I remember this time we did X. And you might think, oh, yeah, it's been a few years since we've done that. Yeah, we'll run that again. Um, and equally, they can be kind of the first ones to spot if you're repeating something too frequently. So you might think, oh, we haven't done this in a while. And they're like, actually, you have. Um, and it, it can be a good kind of reality check sometimes, I think. Yeah, and that's good as well that they they feel confident enough to kind of not challenge you on that, but also bring it up and say, actually, we have done that. Because I think that's that's also really important is creating that environment um, where if they have got suggestions or stuff that they feel like it's a safe space to to make that, I think. Absolutely. So we've had um, young leaders that have been in the bracket of doing their DOV and collecting the hours, but actually um, now they're interested in actually going on to the young leader scheme itself, which is why I came onto this because I didn't really know anything about it. Um, and um, they're really good. Our young leaders are fantastic, but the, the I just worry sometimes that um, they've got exams, they've got other stuff going on. They've got, you know, it's like we're we're kind of asking them to get involved and come along to things and do things. And sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. And but you just kind of, I sometimes um, worry that we're like getting the balance wrong. And you know, they've they've got other. Uh, school commitments and stuff like that that we don't want to get in the way of so any tips for balancing that um well it's it's tricky um I've for example I've had a, a young leader get in touch with me well parents of a young leader get in touch with me and say they've got explorer camp this week they've got young leader camp the next week they've got uh, they're helping out as a young leader on another camp in a week in a week's time it's a lot they've got exams coming up um and you know it's it, you just turn around and say okay um well we can we can work around whatever we need to do you know they don't have to have full attendance and um you can even do silly little things like uh right well we we can put some time in the program for them to, you know, go off into the mess tent, and do a couple of hours of revision, you know, things like that. Um, what you will find is the young leaders themselves may be more sort of wanting to do these events to have time away from the stresses that they get at school. I've had one young leader who, uh, whose mum was very adamant he needs to have a weekend off. Um, yeah, um, hold my hands up. Yeah, fine. If if they need to have that weekend off, two days later, no, he's adamant. He wants this time away. And it was a chilled camp. It was nothing strenuous or anything like that, but it was the weekend that he needed to decompress. And, you know, we, we, we try our hardest. We 
advise as best we can. Um, we all leave, lead busy lives. And, you know, within scouting, we can appreciate how these young people do, you know, have a lot on. And uh, we just have to be flexible. Um, they, they never come within any of the ratios. So if they come, that's a benefit. If they don't, you know, it's not a major loss. Um, and yeah, as long as, you know, keep regular contact with them, ask them how they're doing. Is there anything you can do to help? You know, shall we not put this down on the programme for this week? Shall we, you know, move stuff around because exams are going on? Um, and I think a lot of the young people right now are struggling. They've had this lockdown. They've had time away, it disrupted education. And, you know, us as adults, we do struggle ourselves, but these young people haven't learned yet these coping strategies. And being there just as an ear, you know, as someone to, to listen to them, someone who they're comfortable with, that's always going to be a benefit. So, so yeah, so just keep an eye on them, check how they're doing. You know, if you, you may end up knowing the family, they may have already come through your section before, you know, don't, don't be worried. Um, if they are linked to an Explorer Scout unit, you know, the desk is there. If you've got a young leader unit, the young leader unit leader should be there and checking in with you frequently. If there isn't anything like that, you know, push comes to shove, you know, always send me an email. <laughs> I'm within county. I can come out if needs be. I can advise, you know, explorers at slamscouts.org.uk. That's me. That's my email. If you have any questions, no matter where you are within central Yorkshire, send me an email. I'll see what I can do. I might even be able to know who the desk is for your district and, you know, point you in the right direction. Can I just add something to that? Um, I think it's also, um, I mean, I've got quite a lot of exams or whatever. I think it's good to be able to encourage them to be able to say no to something. So if you ask them to do it, be able, um, come from a perspective of, um, oh, you might have exams on, uh, don't feel obliged to do it, or you don't have to come every week, or feel free to miss a few weeks if you've got exam weeks or something. Because um, as much as... I enjoy it. Sometimes I just don't have the capacity to do it. And I think it's good to be able to say that some weeks I can't make it, but it is good, as uh, Chris was saying, to be able to de-stress from exams by doing something that's not purely school related. Yeah, and actually as leaders, we have, you know, weeks where we have work commitments and we can't do it, you know. So yeah, why should they be any different? Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, thank you for that, Chris. I think that's really good advice. Has that helped, Sarah? Has that helped like, kind of clarify things? Yeah, it has. And I think I think you're you're right. It's about them making their own decisions as well. But then, uh, you know, it, the parents do sometimes get involved, and you you know you're just trying to. Um, but I think it's just making sure that they're happy with what they're doing, and that that um, you know um, we just take everything into account, really. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I suppose building up a good relationship with them as you get to know them better and as they do more volunteering, that will really help with that. Um, what about anybody else? Has anybody else got anything that they've had with young leaders that has worked really well or anything you want advice on? I had a question, if, that, if that's OK. Um, I'm a scout leader, but about a year ago, we resurrected a dormant explorer unit because we had so many scouts who were of the age to move up and nowhere for them to go. So... I've got 19 explorers now and nearly all of them are young leaders and some of those came in as DV, and then we recruited them into explorers and they're doing really well and so at my scout troop I've got two well they're running now I've, I've sort of missed scouts to come to this but they're um the young leaders I have at scouts they're doing a great job they're involved in planning they, they ran the troop forum which worked really well so then we got ideas from we let them run the whole of that we sat back they got all the ideas from young people and they thought back to what they enjoyed when they were scouts, which was great. Because they, they remember that we did a, a camp where we shipwrecked them and they had to survive for the weekend with nothing. And they had to find things, earn things. And they've resurrected that idea. 
um, we thought it was too soon, but they didn't. And they were, they've, they've run with that. So we've been doing survival skills all term. We're building up to doing the same camp again. So that's worked really well. And my question is, and where I'm struggling, I've kind of found myself unofficially the coordinator of all the young leaders within our group. And there are a lot of 16 at the moment that are explorers, plus the D of E ones who are just starting as volunteers, some of whom are within the group, some who are not. And it's working really well on the nights where I'm there or when I get involved, because I've, uh, we had another scheme. I don't know if any of you heard of the Green Young Leaders scheme. It was a um, scouting adventures uh, thing. Six of mine went up to the Lake District. Seven, sorry, went to the Lake District and got trained on that for the weekend, came back, and they've been pushing that out in our group. So that works well because I go and help them with that. But when I'm not there, some of them, the leaders don't know how to deal with them. And this is why I'm struggling. How do I encourage the beaver leaders, the, the cub leaders, to get the most out of the young leaders, our young leaders, my young leaders, without having to have me there all the time, because I don't really want to do seven sessions a week. <laughs> and that's, I, I mean, they're asking me, they're, they're coming to me and saying, how can we, they'll say so-and-so, sometimes they're great, other times they just sit back and they're not getting anything from them. And I've written down those these ideas about, you know, like um, getting them more involved in planning and doing more activities and other things, but is there anything else we can do? Because I do feel we're not getting the most out of some of our young leaders, at Beavers in particular. Okay. Um, I know that was a lot of info, sorry. <laughs> I'd, I'd say the main thing is um, being able to get alongside them, as we mentioned. So um, it's quite hard to be able to work out how you can help someone in, unless you actually have some sort of relationship with them. So I'd encourage your beaver leaders or um, your leaders in your other sections to get to know these young leaders so that they can help them um, and not just see it in a formal relationship. Um, but I don't have too much to add on uh, what they can do in beavers. I guess I come to James it's or Chris. They do know them. This is the thing. And some of these have been, were there beavers once? And it's, it's more about finding the best way to use them. I don't think they really know what to do. And... They've, they've used them for games a little bit, obviously, because it's an easy one. And it is a good thing, but it's there's so much more they can do than that. Particularly at Beavers. I mean, running craft sessions, anything like that, it's fairly straightforward, isn't it? So, I don't know. So, when, I, we, I, I, when we do um, a lot of activities in Cubs, um, at the moment, we've got 30 Cubs, but they're split into two lots of 15, and they come every other week because of COVID. Um, so we have, like, three sixes, so what we might do is if we're doing a badge, so we're doing Pioneer this week, so we've got the knots. Um, but what we'll do is we'll have like five tables of knots, like stations, and then um, the young leaders will run one of those stations. So like the, the way that we run our activities, we usually have stations or, you know, uh, um, different things going on at different times. Um, and because we just haven't got enough leaders, we always put them on running a specific thing. But um, we've got a WhatsApp group, um, which is the, the leaders WhatsApp group. And our young leaders are on that WhatsApp group. And that's how we communicate with them. We would never, as you say, never text them individually. And then we'll have, um, you know, before the meeting, we'll just put on the WhatsApp group. Oh, we're doing this tonight. Uh, you know, Alex and Matty, we hope you'll be able to do this. And, you know, would you, would you be up for running this? This is kind of what we're doing. But we did um, we did something else, which was really good fun. We did the um, U-shaped badge and we did code of conduct. And um, we ran a game which was uh, basically trying to teach the Cubs how annoying it is when they don't listen to us. So um, what we did was we said, OK, uh, you have to pass a, pass a message on to this next six, but you can only do it via the young leader. And we got the young leaders on sign and told them, you mustn't listen to the Cubs, you know, be really annoying, put your earphones on, get, you know, and, and, um, but the Cubs were like, they were so frustrated, but they just thought it was hilarious as well. And, you know, they couldn't have done that with us, but they could do it with the young leaders, you know, so it, I don't know. It's, it's finding those, it's finding the niche for them really where they where they kind of sit in but um sometimes i think it's it's difficult for us as leaders 
we just know that we've got to turn up we've got to do the program we've got to keep everyone safe we've got to do the risk assessments and then you've got to get the young leaders in as well I think it's about showing them that they're a resource not an additional thing that we have to do I mean, with my young leaders, when I give them something, I mean, they're running with two things this term. Um, I've got three of them that come to our session. They're running a session on paracord. They're making woggles, bracelets and Celtic knots. And they're running a session on women's rights because two of them are girls and really wanted to do that. And I'm like, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So they do and they're engaged, but it's getting the same sort of engagement at the other yeah. sections that I'm struggling with. I guess I need to go and see what the, what's really happening and, and encourage the leaders to work more with them. Yeah, I mean, I've had um, in a few years ago, I had a section come to me and say, look, we've got this young leader. They're useless. They're not doing anything to help. They're sat there on the phone. They're chatting away to their friends. They're not really doing any work. So I, I went down one night, you know, I told the leaders, I'll come down, I'll come and have a visit and see what's going on. And they weren't interacting with the young leader. So that young leader just was like, okay, well, I'm not getting interaction. I'm not being asked to do anything. I'm not, all I'm doing is making the juice or whatever. So she just sat there on her phone. Now she's actually one of my assistant Explorer Scout leaders. Fantastic leader. She went to American Jamboree as a participant. She's now on IST for the Korean Jamboree. She's an exemplary scout and she just wasn't utilized now um sort of how do you get a leadership team to to utilize the young leaders in a great in a positive manner um it's tricky um some leaders do get a little bit of a chip on the shoulder sometimes about well i'm here to lead these are kids you know what what can they do to help um it is difficult but once they get on board and they see what they, these young leaders can do, um, you'll you'll switch them for life. Um, maybe it's it's a thing of okay, let's get all the leaders of the group together. So let's have the beaver leaders, the cub leaders, the scout leaders, and the young leaders. Let's have a leaders social event get everyone to work together as teams do a standard team building thing or get them off to off somewhere like you know clip and climb or something like that just getting your leaders together working as a group and then you'll get that that camaraderie that group that that link and hopefully those barriers will break down and you'll be able to make more more use of the young leaders. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work. And it unfortunately it is down to the section leaders. And it is at that point where I turn around to young leaders who struggle and say, let's find you somewhere else. Let's find you a different group. Um, We'll still be in contact. We'll still have things, but let's find you somewhere. Somewhere will actually utilize you. Because the worst thing you can have for a young leader is they, them coming and spending another night to help out to not be used. It might be that the parents drive them down there every every flipping week, but if they don't want to be there, if they seem that they're not getting that feedback, then. Um, they'll do the least possible so it is tricky and you know tim i feel your pain mate i really <laughs> do i really do because you know i've been in similar situations and it is sometimes heads need knocking together and it's like come on these guys are here to help you you know i've shuffled the pack a bit and put some of the more proactive young leaders with some of the less proactive ones so that they could try and encourage each other as well i mean i've, I've moved it around and tried to get i'm trying to get the best out of them because they are all very capable yeah and and that's it you you'll as you say partner up with with the more vocal ones the quieter ones and 
yeah, they'll they'll rub off each other. They'll they'll get things moving. Yeah, but uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Who should update the missions, by the way? Because I can see them doing stuff towards missions, but I don't know whether I should put that on OSM or not. So, um, I do you have a young leader unit within your district? Yeah, we do. We do, and is the young leader leader good? Any good? <laughs> um, focuses very heavily on training, but that's about it, really. Um, okay. Don't see a lot else of them, but the, the training's fine. There's a, there's a course on Wednesday this week, so a few of them are doing that. Okay. But so just, um, I just wanted to know whether I should be doing more because, like, they're running sessions and running games, but it's not getting filled in as their missions, which it probably should. Yeah. So each one of those explorers should have a form of logbook. Yeah. Um, now, uh, if they don't have one, they ain't massively expensive. You can get them from scratch. No, they've got them. They, when they go for module A, they get given it. I've seen. I've seen. It. So get them to bring it down. The the missions are signed off by the section leaders who they're working with okay um they're finally signed off by the explorer scout young leader leader but okay. um you're there as the witness testimony for what they've done for so if the... we put it in the logbook and then they take it to the um explorer leader from the young leader section and then they can get it signed off yeah so it's it's yeah. just like when you're doing your adult training and yeah. then you just need someone to validate it at the end that's yeah. that's what the young leader leader's there for okay that, that makes sense i didn't i just didn't know that <laughs> yeah and and this is it it's it's like a mystery i mean it's one of the reasons why we're putting out these uh these courses just you know getting that knowledge out there for people so so yeah good luck yeah, thanks and it sounds like you've done a great job though like resurrecting that explorer unit and kind of with 19 explorers and like all of them getting to young leaders i think that sounds fantastic so just keep going and you'll get there i think yeah. i love the idea chris's idea of having a social and doing some team body i think that could be really effective um but i'm just looking at the time and we are nearly at half past so does, does anybody have any other questions that they wanted to ask or anything um no well if anything does come to you, you've got my email. Chris has shared his email. And am I all right to send that out in the follow-up email, Chris? I'm going to send out. Is that? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, fab. So I'm going to send out an email with some links. I've put some links in um, to where you can find more information on the website um, because there is a lot of information that's on the website um, for to look through if you do have any other questions. And I've put a link into the orange card as well where you can download that from the PDF um, just so you've got that. Um, and also I've got a, a feedback survey that I'd really appreciate it if you could take a couple of minutes to fill in, just so to let us know how you found the session this evening and um, any ideas you've got for anything else you'd like support with in the future, whether that's um, young leaders, youth trip scouting or anything, anything at all. Um, we'd really like to hear it because that's helping us shape what we're doing at the county and how we can support you best. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much for coming along. We really appreciate you coming in and sharing your thoughts with us and your ideas. Um, and if you do have any other questions in the future, please feel free to get in touch. And the recording will be shared probably towards the end of the month because we've got a series of three of these. So I'm going to wait to the end of the last one, which is finances next week, if you're interested. Um, and then I'll share them on the Central Yorkshire Scouts YouTube so you can go through it again or share it with people if you think they would be interested as well. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye. Thank you thank very you. much. Hi. Can, Tim, uh, thank you. can I just ask Tim, um, we're in exactly the same position 